really important. Um, I am sure that uh, most of you have seen the headlines in the papers today. The headlines are about the letter which OSIDA has written to the American ambassador calling for selective targeted sanctions against certain individuals in this government. It is the very first time this has ever happened and we thought that we need to make a statement with regards to this very important issue. More so that all the three heads of government, that is the head of the executive, the head of the legislature, the head of the judiciary, have all been named in the OSIDA letter. That makes it extremely important and something that we cannot uh, just look at lightly. It is extremely important. And if we are to be fair, we have to call upon every single Zambian to take time to actually read the letter that OSIDA have given to the American ambassador. It has got details of the various infringements uh, that this government and those individuals who are named have been doing and which are affecting the democracy of our country. Uh, so as United Kwacha Alliance, we have taken note of the letter by OSIDA to the American ambassador to Zambia, His Excellency Michael Gonzalez, in which they have stepped up to take up the challenge of defending our country. The OSIDA letter is calling for targeted sanctions against certain individuals. Who can deny that OSIDA plays an important role in giving the nation a conscience. OSIDA has been touted by even the UPND themselves as a credible organization. Indeed, prior to 2021, OSIDA were clearly in President Akainde's corner. OSIDA, therefore, has no axe to grind and cannot, therefore, be accused of being bitter. The OSIDA statement in paragraph 2 states that they are deeply alarmed by the continued abuse of institutions of governance and the erosion of democracy in Zambia today under the leadership of President Akainde and his ruling UPND. Of particular concern to OSIDA and many others such as UCA, are the violations of democratic rights such as the right to public assembly, free speech, freedom of association, and the right to a speedy trial. <clears throat> These are also the concerns of several other organizations such as the Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops, the Law Association of Zambia, Chapter One Foundation, and ourselves, UCA. All of these have called on the Zambian government to respect and enable the expression of these fundamental democratic rights. Even diplomats, such as the British, American, Swedish, and others, have been making statements that they have concerns regarding the shrinking democratic space. Individuals who are seen as leaders in terms of the fight for rights and freedoms. Individuals such as Dr. Sishua Sishua, <coughs> Professor Munanduro, State Council John Sangwa, State Council Linda Kasonde, activist Brebna Changala, and many others have pointed out areas and incidents when officials in this government 
have clearly strayed offside. There is no doubt that many individuals and organizations will be sending supplemental petitions and letters to the American Embassy. <clears throat> and they will be providing additional evidence in particular areas they agree with in the OSIDA letter. Indeed, some may even point out new and further areas and institutions of concern. We, as the United Kwacha Alliance, will certainly be sending in a supplemental petition to the one that OSIDA has given. OSIDA points out that combined calls for reform and reversal of these undemocratic practices have fallen on deaf ears. OSIDA notes that we have instead witnessed over the last several months further restrictions on the rights of citizens. OSIDA in its letter observes that, and I will quote what they say. Public rallies by opposition parties continue to be banned by the Zambia Police Service. The judiciary continues to engage in what appears to be willful delay of the resolution of urgent political matters affecting the main opposition party. The executive arm of government continues to interfere in the operations of other institutions. The leadership of the National Assembly continues to undermine democracy in Parliament. Critics of the government continue to face intimidation and threats from state institutions and public officials. And leaders of the opposition continue to face arrest from the police based on what appears to be politically motivated charges. End of quote. I do not think that any true and fair Zambian will deny this statement by Osida. This indeed is the biggest news item and should be headlined in all media. This is the very first time in Zambia's history that sanctions have been called for against any Zambian, let alone the very top heads of the three arms of government. That is a very serious issue. And if we do not take this seriously, we will be the only ones to blame. All state-controlled media, however, seem to have been instructed to treat the letter as if it does not exist or it's not important. It is like a child covering his eyes with his fingers and thinking that because he's hiding behind his fingers, you cannot see him. <laughs> that is the attitude President Hakainde and the UPND have. The news is, however, already gone worldwide. It is being reported outside this country. It has gone viral. So trying to pretend that it is not there will not help this government. So it's very surprising that the government's response so far uh, is to stick their head in the sand like an ostrich which has nowhere to hide. We can still see the featherless legs of that ostrich. We can still see that large mound of the body of the ostrich. They cannot hide, people are seeing. And they must know that the matter will not just disappear and go away. Tomorrow, President Hakainde is supposed to address the National Assembly. He is supposed to address the National Assembly on 
the application of national values and principles and what steps have been done in order to arrive at that. The national principles and values, according to the Constitution, include the issue of good governance, include the issue of ensuring that the rights of Zambians are respected, include all the matters which are in the OSIDA letter. Those are the issues that uh, are supposed to be addressed in the address to Parliament tomorrow. Everybody, therefore, is going to be waiting for that address. Zambians are keenly looking to see how President Akainde will respond to the serious allegations in the OSIDA letter. The Americans are going to be wide awake to see if President Hakainde has credible and believable answers to the questions raised in the OSIDA letter. International and local investors will make decisions as to whether or not to invest in Zambia, depending on how President Hakainde will be able to provide proof that there should be no worries concerning continued abuse of state institutions like the Anti-Corruption Commission, the Independent Broadcasting Authority, the Zambia Police Service, the National Assembly of Zambia, and the judiciary. Investors will not be willing to come if he does not provide clear evidence and answers to the OSIDA letter. We therefore call upon President Hakainde to ask his presidential team to tear up the speech they have prepared for him to deliver to Parliament <laughs> on the progress made, if any, in the application of national values and principles tomorrow. Instead, the President's team should burn the midnight oil tonight in, and into the early dawn and come up with a new address to Parliament that will address the issues raised in Osida's letter point by point. If they find it difficult to respond to the issues raised in the Osida letter by tomorrow, President Hakainde should postpone his parliamentary presidential address to next week, Friday. There is already a precedent set of postponing this address. As you remember, President Hakainde had postponed the address from last Friday to tomorrow. So let him postpone it again if he's not ready to answer the OSIDA letter in his address tomorrow. And should he, even after postponement, not be ready to address the issues raised in the OSIDA letter, then we we'll call upon him to resign and to call for early elections because clearly... <laughs> a sugar-coating address tomorrow to Parliament will not do. Let us save Zambia and make it great again. God bless and save our great land. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, President uh, Sakula Scotta, for that powerful message to the Zambians. I'm sure they are listening where they are. And uh, Zambia is really suffering. And I would want to uh, invite the media house if we have uh, questions, we'll be taking them into three. When you ask a question, you tell us where you, you are directing your question, to which president you are directing the question. So we'll be taking questions into threes, uh, starting now.
Um, I'm Alfonso, uh, a freelancer journalist. Uh, my question is directed to the chairperson of the Alliance. I uh, just want to to get your the clear view on how far you've gone in terms of registration of the Alliance as a political party. Because should last week there some something that was regretting regarding the, the registration of the uh, Alliance. Can you? advice, how far it's gone, and what's the current status of <coughs> Thank you. Second question, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Ndanti Duncan Sumanza from Ndanti Media. My question goes to the chairman. Your voice, sir. Uh, Can you raise your voice? So my name is Ndanti Duncan Sumanza. I'm uh, coming from Diamond TV. Uh, my question goes to the chairman. And I think one of the things I want to refer to is uh, the Variety Democracy Institute. They did issue out a report. Uh, ranking Zambia as the third uh, democratic country out of the nine countries. Oh, now, with regards to, uh, <laughs> now, with regards to OSIDA uh, letter, how do you make all this uh, into one solid conclusion or something? <laughs> good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, panelists. My name is um, Mishek, Mishek Nyurongo from Central Voice TV. My question is directed to the chairperson as well as uh, the newly appointed SG. SG, in your statement, you made an allegation that um, the UPND government is saving the interest of uh, the imperialists as well as the foreign agents. And uh, <clears throat> the chairperson uh, delivering uh, his presentation, he made um, he said that uh, they'll be making a supplemental letter to OSIDA um, uh, which is seeking audience from the Americans and uh, from my understanding them America should be one of the imperialists if I'm not mistaken uh, so the question that I have is what's your stance what is Uka's stance on the imperialist and uh, because from the SG, he's accusing the UPND government of saving the interest of the imperialists. So what's, what's your stance? Because you are also seeking direction from the very imperialist. Yeah. I invite upon the chairman, President Sakovas, for that to attend to the three questions. The first one, the registration of the alliance. The second one, where Zambia is being ranked as state in democracy, and yet Osida is writing a letter contrary to what has been uh, written. And then the, the, the last one, which has been directed to you and the SG, is about the, the imperialism. So you can attend to those questions. Um, thank you very much. I do know that the issue of uh, registration is something which is upmost in people's uh, minds. Um, I'm happy to be able to uh, let you know that uh, last week um, I had interaction with the Permanent Secretary at uh, the Ministry of uh, Home Affairs, uh, P.S. Akafumba, and also with his colleague, there's two P.S.s at Home Affairs. Uh, P.S. Uh, Matimba. Uh, very cordial uh, interaction that we had, mutual respect, and one which uh, helped to uh, move things along. Uh, as a result of the meeting, uh, the Acting Inspector General uh, of Police, uh, Mr. Muyambango, was also uh, uh, hooked into those discussions and I went to see him uh, following uh, the direction from P.S. Akafumba and he too uh, received uh, us very well and uh, he also stated that he does not see why there should be a problem with having uh, the fingerprints uh, of uh, the proposed uh, uh, office holders uh, to be processed and uh, as a result he said he himself would uh, be uh, taking in those uh, forms for them to start processing. Uh, he even uh, stamped on the form as you can see there is the stamp there 
indicating that they have taken in the, the forms. Uh, he did indicate that uh, it's not a procedure that takes uh, one day and that uh, they would work on them as quickly as possible um, and that once that is done, uh, then they will give us uh, the clearances, or if some of the people do not have clearances, we would have to submit different uh, fingerprints for different uh, set of people to ensure that the full set of 10 uh, have no criminal records. Once that is done, those cleared fingerprints will then be attached to the form and then taken to the station which dealt with taking the fingerprints, which is uh, Woodlands Police Station, for the officer in charge to endorse uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, stating that they also have no problems and also uh, looking at the comments that will be put by uh, those who are doing the clearance of the, uh, of the fingerprints. There's also a step needed of then getting also the council secretary to also sign on the same form. At that stage, when that has been done, that is when the registrar of society will again come back into the picture and uh, deal with, the, with that. So that is the current uh, stage where we are at and we'll keep you informed as we go ahead. Um, and uh, if we meet any hurdles, we shall let you know. So at least uh, that is one good news story. Um, I think that there was a second question uh, from Mr. Simwanza there on the TV about uh, Variety Democracy Institute and uh, how that sits uh, with um, with uh, the OSIDA letter. I'm very, very confident and sure that for all of you who are here, if not practically all of you, this was the very, very first time you were ever hearing about variety democracy. I, I'm looking around and I'm, I don't see anybody sort of saying, no, 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 I knew about them. It's the very first time <laughs> that we've heard about them. Mm -hmm. It's not like somebody like, for example, if we said Human, uh, uh, rights, human, Watch. human rights Watch. A lot of, yes, I can see their <laughs> faces, they are nodding. They're, they're, they're an institution who are known. They're, they're not just out of the blue. So as a result, when I saw that, I, I had to do a, a thorough search and investigation as to who VDEM are. And what I found uh, is that it's an academic NGO that produces rankings that not many people take seriously. <laughs> and their, their reputation is that they fall short of meeting the standard of doing a thorough reports in that they lack empirical justification and almost entirely rest on assumptions which are themselves either false or dated. It can only be taken seriously by politicians who are being praised by them and their supporters. <laughs> so it's clear that this institution that none of you have ever heard of before is not an institution on, upon which you should place a lot of... I'm even surprised it made headlines, you know, such an institution. Whereas with OSIDA, all of you know of, of OSIDA. All of you know of the works OSIDA has done in the past. It is not something new. It is an organization which has got a lot of credibility. It is an organization we all listen to once they speak. So to answer you, uh, Mr. Simwanza, that is how I will 
juxtapose Videm and Osida. Um, the third uh, question which was uh, brought up is uh, by Mishek Nirongo uh, of Central Voice um, on the allegation that uh, UPND is uh, more concerned with uh, uh, serving imperialist uh, interests. Um, we, we strongly feel so. And that, that is a position we take, that that is what they're doing. I think that uh, us uh, writing, or uh, uh, if we are going to uh, be seen to write to the American uh, embassy, that does not mean that we are supporting imperialists. The American embassy are not imperialists. The imperialists are certain uh, multinationals who come and they loot our countries, take our minerals. That is not being done by the American ambassador. So we must differentiate between who is the imperialist and who are diplomats. So we see no harm or contradiction in us going to uh, have audience with the American ambassador or any other diplomats. That is something that we shall be uh, undertaking and, uh, and doing. Um, I don't know whether it's uh, necessary for the SD, I believe that I've covered the, what he too would have liked to, to say. So take that message that UCA is out here and the focus is to ensure that we put this country back on track. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I'm sure those uh, questions have been uh, answered well. And uh, before we take another set of questions, I'm coming from. Before we, we take another set of questions, I would want to acknowledge the presence of uh, Mr. Benba Changala, who is uh, here with us. <laughs> Just to wait until people start. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Brebna. As I sit here, I have a phone in my hand. I'm being removed from Osida elsewhere. <laughs> this is a, a, dy a dynamic nation, but uh, we must remain firm, resolute, and focused. We face a mammoth task, and that task is how we reorganize ourselves to face colleagues that were once colleagues who have decided to part away for various selfish reasons and mount a new administrative approach to the destruction of our national unity. I stand before you
time has come to tell you people to tell us how you changed the government in 1991 so that we can change the government of Mr. Aka in the which has taught the Zambian people. I want to tell you that you are here. I want to tell you are here. We are not going to allow you that the Zambian people are going to live in poverty when you are here. Tell us how you changed the government in 1991 so that Mr. Aka in the and this government, they can pack their bags before 2026. Because the Zambian people are living in poverty. When you, the leaders, were there and you are still alive, the reason why God gave you life is to make a difference in the Zambian people's life. That's why here, before I end up my contribution, I want to thank Mr. Edgar Chagwanu, the former president. We are not going to thank him when he's dead. Edgar is a man of infrastructure. When are you going to honor that man? Are we going to honor when he dies? Time has come to honor that man when he's still alive. It is you, the Uka people, who should organize an award for Etika Chagwarungu, who is still alive. His friends are dead. What are we waiting for to honor a big man who works for the Zambian people? Time has come for the Zambian people to rise up. Fear is the beginning of the downfall of every country. Why should we fear one individual? Mm. Aka India Chair must understand that this country is for the Zambian people. We are not going to allow him. It is better all of us we go to jail for the benefit of the future and the younger generation. Okay. Time has come for you, the people in the Uka, to rise up. Like an eagle, that's why we have got an eagle there, is to rise up together, to fight for Mother Zambia. When there is failed leadership, in conclusion, can you tell us when we are going for the early election? <laughs> Joseph. Joseph Chimba. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Another hand there. Viva, viva, uka! Viva, viva, uka! Viva, viva, uka! Viva, viva, uka! I'm a national mobilization chairman for Citizens Defense. I'm also MCC and again member of Uganda. My major concern is what? That major concern needs to be critically looked into by the opposition. From the time the UPND government took over power, water restoration exercise and never rested. That should never be ignored. Outside this, my nephew, Onis, who is 16 years old, next year he or she will vote. Now, my nephew, my nephew, he is a man who is a man who is the second issue is my request. Glad our SG for UCA has been uh, uh, pronounced. This is uh, our request as for mobilization. Great Sherwa. Great Sherwa. Our request is to SG, please speed up the process of all the modalities so that we begin moving. Yeah. We need to move. We don't have time. Viva Ukabibwa! Thank you very much. The last question. Last time. Yes, sir. Good morning, leaders. My name is Mwini. Coming from Hong Chan, Uganda. Your name is? Mwini. Uh, Chair, just a few questions. Uh, currently, we have the shading. And uh, it's a very disturbing issue especially that businesses are no longer running as they should, especially small businesses. What are some of the long-term measures that you various leaders have? Because this is not the first time we are experiencing the shading. We have experienced the shading even in the previous government. And so, as leaders, should the people of Zambia trust you with power to lead Zambia in the, uh, in the future? What plans or how are you intending to make sure that you get rid of 
not shading, so that in case we do not have rains, because you know climate change is a very serious matter that we cannot ignore. So we do not know how the pattern is going to be in the nearest future. How are we intending to make sure that this will be an issue of the past? Uh, we also have the, the drought issue and uh, there's little or no food in the country. What are some of the short-term measures that you are putting in place because you are here to serve the people, even in opposition? How do you intend to serve the people of Zambia to make sure that they do not perish in hunger? And also, the last question on the matter of democracy. Uh, Uka has been saying democracy is uh, shrinking in the country. And uh, the chair made a very remarkable comment in line with registration. And he says, the process is going on very well and they will keep updating the people of Zambia. Isn't that a sign of democracy in the country that uh, opposition political parties are able to thrive and processes of registration are going on well? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have three one from the grassroots media. They want to find out that uh, most of the leaders we have here, they were there. 1991 and they want, uh, he's asking that you tell us how you change the government so that 2026 will be uh, easy for us to change the government. <coughs> then uh, uh, another another hand there, Mr. Maplanga talked about water registration which has never rested. How are we going to handle it? Then Mr. Mwene is asking you to give a leakage to the government how they should uh, resolve load shedding and uh, the drought issues. <laughs> So, and they also he asked the question about shrinking democracy. Mr. Chairman, you can attend to those questions, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chimba. Chichimba. Uh, oh, sorry, I written it as uh, Chimba, Chichimba. My apologies. Uh, Mr. Chichimba, your words are very inspiring. Um, they also give us uh, strength. They also help us to remain focused. Um, you ask about 1991 and how that was achieved. 1991 was achieved because of people like you, people who stood up and were not afraid to speak. It was not about the leaders of the movement for multi-party democracy. It was the people. The people are the ones who drove the whole uh, journey into multi-partism. It was a people's movement. Today, what we see is very similar to what we had in 1991. You heard my colleague, President Imboela, talking about how the people were ahead of us and we were running to catch up to them. That is because what United Kwacha Alliance stands for is something that every Zambian stands for, people such as yourself. And that is why this movement, the United Kwacha Alliance, is going to succeed. It has got all the hallmarks of 1991. There is a wind of change that the UPND will not be able to stop. Yeah. That, is the, that is how we are going to make sure that Kwacha is coming to Zambia. Turning to the second question uh, from Mr. George Mapulanga. Uh, thank you again for your questions. Indeed, voter registration is very, very important, and it's an exercise that we cannot ignore. And even uh, speeding up mobilization is something we need to do. It's for that very reason that uh, we have put in place a Secretary General who is going to be tasked with actually following up on these very issues and others that you have mentioned. He is going to be putting together a team of very competent people, as competent as he is. He will even have some who are even more competent than himself. That is how good the team will be, and it is going to 
ensure that these issues are dealt with. Uh, Mr. Mwene had uh, three questions. Uh, the first one he had was uh, with regard to load shedding and that it was disturbing small businesses um, and uh, not only small businesses by the way, it's also disturbing medium and even big businesses. Um, it's disturbing all business. That is what the load shedding is doing. Um, it's sad that government doesn't seem to be serious about tackling this problem. It is a very serious problem. I was deeply disturbed to see the response from the uh, chief government spokesperson, uh, Mr. Cornelius Muetwa. He said, if there is load shedding, what you should do is turn on your inverters. I'm sure you heard him say that. Yes. I just want to do a little survey here. Amongst you, those who have got inverters at their house or at their business, can you put up your hands? Those who have got inverters. Solar, Solar inverters. <laughs> Is there anyone in this whole crowd? Please, if you have, put up your hand. <laughs> I do not see a single hand. So the, then it means that UPND and Larry Mwetwa has got no solution for you because he's asking you to do something that you obviously cannot do. That's how I'm serious the UPND are. Or maybe let me ask, how many of you have got gensets? <laughs> 